Hello everyone. This is a case study presentation presented by the Group 5 of Section B, Third Year Medical Technology Students of NBDU. So our case, the reference of our case, it is from the four cases of carbapenem, resistant enterobacteria infection from January to March in 2014. So particularly, we chose the case number Number two, which is all about enterobacter, enterobacter, kawake. So before we proceed to the case presentation, let's have some background about the bacteria enterobacter kawake. This bacteria is gram-negative, rod-shaped, facultative anaerobe commonly found in the gastrointestinal tract of humans. It is not usually a primary primary pathogen, although it is sometimes associated with urinary and respiratory tract infections. For the transmission and disease, the most prevalent mode of transmission for this organism is nosocomial infection, meaning the contraction of the germ from being hospitalized. This bacteria produces beta-lactamases called cephalosporinases which are chromosomally encoded. For this infection, although relatively susceptible to disinfection and desiccation when dried on a surface, Enterobacter cloacae can be a challenging microorganism to mitigate in solution. And for the information of everyone, Enterobacter cloacae infections have the highest mortality rate when compared to the rest of Enterobacter genus. So this is the actual presentation of the case study. So we will furthermore elaborate the lab findings and the, the test. So the case presented shows that the chief complaint of the patients with subarachnoid hemorrhage is headache. So subarachnoid hemorrhage is a type of stroke. So in the laboratory findings, the cerebrospinal fluid culture was positive for Enterobacter cloacae and it is resistant to amoxicillin, clavulanic acid, cefazolin, cefoxetine, cefotaxim, tigacycline, piperacillin or tazobactam, ertapenem, and imipenem. And it is moderately susceptible to tigacycline, minimum inhibitory concentration 2, and ciprofloxacin, minimum inhibitory concentration 2. And also, it is susceptible to gentamicin, minimum inhibitory concentration of less than or equal 1, and amikacin, minimum inhibitory concentration 16, trimetrophim or sulfamethoxazole, minimum inhibitory concentration of less than or equal 20, and astronom, minimum inhibitory concentration of less than or equal 1, minimum inhibitory concentration of less than or equal 1, and imipenem, minimum inhibitory concentration 0 0.5. Patient was diagnosed of having a carbapenemase produced cloacae infection. And the case presented shows an example of a considered sample contamination during the This is because the patient used the same bed with the patient positive carbapenemase producing enterobacter cloacae infection. So the resistance to some antibiotics uh, said a while ago, like er erta ertapenem and imipenem, a carbapenemase gene test was performed, which was positive for VIM type 2 gene, which is the VIM stands for Verona Integron Metallobilactamase, which is yung, the, the metallobilactamase or class B of B lactamase which are uh, enzymes that hydrolyzes almost clinical available relaxant antibiotics. So cerebrospinal fluid test revealed a white blood cell count of 6 microliter liter, and red blood cell count of 1,770 microliters. And also WBC and CRP levels were normal. So thus the infection was considered absent, especially that the patient has only a head taken there was no fever involved. So a follow-up cerebrospinal fluid culture and blood tests were performed later. So these culture medias presented are used to um, for enterobacter cloacae. 
So the left picture is a Enterobacter coacae colonies on the blood on blood agar, which is cultivated in in about 24 hours at 37 degrees Celsius. So its morphology in the agar is large, smooth, flat colonies with entire margin without beta hemolysis. So there is no presence of hemolysis area. So in the other picture, it's a under Maconti R culture plate. It is uh, the colonial growth is at 24 hours after being inoculated with a specimen sample. Uh, this is another picture of Enterobacter coacae on a triptych soy agar. So, and also frequently the the Enterobacter frequently it is frequently grown at 30 degrees Celsius on the agar or broad or at 35 degrees Celsius in triptych soy. Test. So, specifically, the enterobacteria coacae. So, these are the reactions. So, in lysine, it is negative, arginine positive, positive for orn ornithine, positive for VP, which stands for Borges, um, Borges Proskauer test. And also, fermentation of adonitol, which is rep represented by V symbol, which is and for the uh, reaction variable, which is uh, liable to changes or it is not consistent. So negative for the arabitol, positive for lactose, positive for melibiose, positive for raffinose, posi positive for sucrose, positive for salicine, positive for sorbitol, and B again for uris and negative for yellow pigment. So for additional information, the enterobacter cloacae are gram-negative bacteria that belong to the family Enterobacteriaceae, and they can be both aerobic and anaerobic. So the following are treatment for Enterobacter cloacae. First is the beta-lactams, which are named for beta-lactam ring in their chemical structure, including the penicillins, cephalosporins, and related compounds. And these agents are active against many gram-positive, gram-negative, and anaerobic organisms. Next is the carbapenems, are a class of beta-lactam also, that are active against many aerobic and anaerobic gram-positive and gram-negative organisms. Carbapenems are notable for their ability to inhibit beta-lactamase enzymes, or also called penicillins, penicillinase. So beta-lactamase enzymes produced by some bacteria that is responsible for, for their resistance to beta-lactam antibiotics like penicillins, cephalosporins, and etc. So of all the beta-lactam antibiotics, the carbapenems possess the broadest spectrum of activity and the greatest potency against bacteria. And they are also used as a last line agents. So carbapenems are active against Haemophilus influenza and aerobes, and then lastly, Enterobacteriaceae, including those that produce beta lactamase and extended spectrum beta lactamase. Next is the aminoglycosides, are active against various gram positive and gram negative organisms. Aminoglycosides are particularly potent against members of Enterobacteriaceae family. They are also called bacteri bactericidal antibiotics because they kill bacteria directly and they accomplish this by stopping bacteria from producing proteins which is needed for their su survival. And then lastly, the sulfamatoxazole trimetoprim suspension or also known as cotrimoxazole among other names is an antibiotic which is used to treat a variety of bacterial infection. And they are active against broad spectrum gram-positive bacteria, like for example, Staphylococcus aureus, gram-negative bacteria, and protozoans. But they are inactive against anaerobes, Tryponema, Pallidum, Mycobacterium tuberculosis, Mycoplasma species and Pseudomonas aeruginosa. That's all.